Looking. 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 Hi. You good girl, how you doing? Good morning. Okay, bye bye pumpkin. There she goes. There goes the pumpkin. Bye pumpkin. And hello Toby. Ooh, good boy Toby. Oh, and Tucker's here. The whole gang's here. Good morning, Tuck. Good morning. You gonna come down? I know, stairs aren't fun anymore. Stairs aren't fun anymore. Bye, Tucker. What about you? You coming? You good boy, Tobes. Oh my goodness, it smells so good in here. Step out into the garage and just hit in the face with the smell of flowers. Look at that. It's this disso cactus. It smells phenomenal. It's like a lemony, citrusy kind of smell. And then I have some orchids that are blooming too. They're, the problem is I can't, there are things over here that I can't show you just yet. So I can't go. It's, let me get, hold on. Mm, before I dive into all that. So today's vlog is going to be a little bit different in the sense of that I'm not really posting the vlog. The vlog, it's just, okay. So here's what happens. Let me tell you a story. Let's start with the end of the story. It's Saturday. This vlog's supposed to be out in a few hours. My family's doing Thanksgiving today. The day this vlog comes out, Thanksgiving was a couple days prior. Only explain that for people who aren't watching the vlog the day it comes out. And uh, leading up to things, I was doing a bunch of cooking and whatnot. I like to prepare my casseroles and stuff the day before so that I can just plop them in the oven and heat them up the day of Thanksgiving and, you know, just Thanksgiving stuff. If you celebrate Thanksgiving or if you just cooked big meals for a lot of people, you know what I'm talking about. Problem with that is in my head, I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking, okay, well, I'll do some cooking and finish up the vlog and then um, I'll edit the vlog and go to bed and do all the... The thing is, though, after a day of cooking, I, um, not, I didn't have it in me to edit a video, so... I, I didn't. I went to bed. I was really tired. I'm sorry. It was kind of one of those moments where it was like, uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta recognize you can't do absolutely everything. And it, that was, that was how things went for me last night. And now here we are this morning and I'm going, well, crap, there are people who look forward to a Saturday video and I don't, I got nothing. Editing the vlogs is simple. You know, I just sit and make cuts and stuff like that. There aren't usually special effects or anything like that. But it can take a long time because since I film, you know, usually Sunday through Friday or Monday through Thursday, by the time I sit down to edit, sometimes I don't, I, I have no idea what I'm about to see. I have an idea, but there's a lot of footage and a lot of stuff going. So it's like, I remember what I've done throughout the week, but I've been doing this vlogging thing for so long that, like I said, sometimes I sit down to edit and I'm like, wait a minute, what? wait, <laughs> I vlogged this? I don't even remember. It happens sometimes. So it can make it take a little bit longer to edit. I actually think it's fun because, like, you you know, everybody, if you have a week time go by, there's more than one thing going on. So it's like there'll be, like, sometimes three different things going on the vlogs that I can create in the software and, like, make them into their own little stories, sort of, and hopefully find a flow. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's just a bunch of randomness and just little clips of what's going on throughout the week, which is what the, I think the vlog would have been. So, uh... Uh, here's what I'm thinking. We can just hang out for a few minutes. Just talk. I can uh, show some plants, some flowers, some things that are going on. The fish are eating. They're in there somewhere. I just threw, I put way too much food in there. So should have done that. Oops. Oh, and how, <laughs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Like four or five minutes into this. How's everybody doing? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. I hope you're good. I'm great. I literally, I just crawled out of bed like, I mean, I was coming down the stairs. Y'all just saw it. I'm just waking up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take 10, pull my ass together, and come right back. So what I was thinking was that it might be fun and easier for me to edit and get out today while I'm doing all these other things. Might be fun to just kind of hang out while I do some of my plant things, my morning routine stuff out here in the grow room. And then, you know, we could talk in the comments later. Sorry that there's, it's not going to be a long video. I mean, not compared to my usual Saturday videos. I mean, it could be. I don't know. It The way my brain's going right now, it could end up being very, very long. <laughs> we will see. So the first thing I do when I come out here is I, one, pay attention to the temperature and the humidity. I make adjustments to my fans. I can look right here and see that the air is very dry. 
40%. That's about as low as I like it to get. It does get lower than that anytime those garage doors open. There's garage doors through that plastic. It gets much more dry because winter air is very dry. So uh, for that, I just have a spray bottle with water and I go through and I spray. I usually do about two bottles of these. I have a humidifier like in my shopping cart and I'm just on the fence with it because this is so easy and it does the trick. The air stays moist for the majority of the day. And I just don't feel like having to refill a jug on a humidifier on top of everything else I do in the morning. You know what I mean? But it's it's in the shopping cart. I'm going to think about it. Once things are like really up and running in here and the rest of my plastic is up and whatnot. And then there's this waterfall back here. The humidity is not a huge struggle. But it also would be better for the plants to not like constantly be spraying them down unless I'm using you know, some sort of really clean reverse osmosis water because I'm using the water from the pond. So there are some plants, particularly like this tree fern that's back here. See the, there's a, there, there she is. The tree fern don't really want dirty water getting into the crown of the plant, but the water's not like filthy. It's fairly clean water. I keep carbon in the filter, which helps, but you know, you have to make sure to change that out frequently. And I have a UV sterilizer, but I haven't set it up yet, so I've been bad about that. I need to put a new bulb in it. You have to change the bulbs in those every year, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Oh, and then I need to soak the orchids. Then I come over here, loosen this rope up, drop the orchids down, and then give them a soak. They like to soak. I probably, I used to do these soaks every single day. But I've learned over the years that every other day, depending on how warm it is and how dry the air is, seems to be fine for them. These vandacious orchids, you know, they don't have any media around their roots, so they need that nice moist air. And I can tell if they're well hydrated by how quickly those roots turn green. If I put these in the water and the roots on them don't turn green within like, I'd say 30 seconds to a minute, then I know that I need to be soaking them more often. But so far, so good. They're starting to green up. You can kind of see it there. In like 10 minutes, you'll be able to see a lot better. Because they were a little bit dry, only because I wasn't really out here much yesterday or the day before. So the humidity didn't stay up. That's why I think it would be smart to just go ahead and bite the bullet and get a humidifier instead of just spraying everything down. There are multiple reasons to not do things this way. Since I've been doing it for so many years and it hasn't been a problem, it can become a bad habit to just be like hey it's fine but really there are certain plants like i talked about the fern where i don't want water going into that crown unless it's clean water right i mean ferns like a very wet environment typically but that's usually because of rainwater which is cleaner <laughs> much much cleaner when compared to water that has fecal matter in it right so and i have an rodi unit in my house that's reverse osmosis plus deionization and that really, really purifies the water. And I mostly use that water for when I'm adding a supplement into my spray water, like this CalMag Plus right here. And it says, if we can get it in there, can also be applied as a foliar spray. Now, uh, I, I have mixed feelings about foliar sprays, but it hasn't hurt anything. And for certain things like my air plants, my Tillandsias, and then the orchids, which is why I'm talking about this right now, I will do this probably at twice a week. I just don't want water that's like, that has a lot of dissolved solids in it. That's what I'm trying to say. And that pond water, even though it's filtered, still has a lot of dissolved solids in it. And then you add this and on top of that, and it's just, it's a bit much. So I will soak those orchids, typically, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Pull them back up. I give them a minute to kind of drip off a little bit. And that's when I add something like this, particularly for those orchids. It, I don't, it's really not being used as a foliar spray for the orchids when it's going onto the roots, but I prefer to do that after they've soaked because then it's not just running off the roots. Because otherwise, sometimes a, a lot of water will come off of those roots before it will stick and the roots will take it in. Do you get what I'm saying? I know nobody asks. I'm just telling you. So that's, there's a little bit of what goes on there. Okay, so that's what's going on over there. There are some nice blooms going on which I know I've shown this one before. That's the Pachara Pink Delight, I think, not labeled, just my best guess. And this one is a Vanda Cerulea Semi-Alba, a very, very white 
Cerulea Semi Alba. That better be what it is, because I actually paid a lot of money for this orchid a few years ago, and this is the first time it's bloomed. And I think, okay, so when I talked about this particular flower a couple weeks ago, pardon the shakiness, just trying to get my angle right here, lighting and whatnot, I talked about how there's usually heavy tessellation in these flowers, which are all those little veins, and I couldn't see it before, but it is starting to kind of show through, and it has, I've had it for a couple of years, and it hasn't bloomed for me, but I have another Cerulea Semi-Alba, and the flowers are a much deeper purple, at least in comparison to this flower, but they're still white. So I guess it's that semi-alba part that's like this. Maybe the other one I have actually isn't a semi-alba. Okay, that makes sense. You know, sometimes you have to sort of just kind of talk out loud to put the pieces together. Maybe my other one, which might be this one that's in spike back here. Although I think that that's just a regular pacharo. We'll, we'll see when it starts to bloom. Um, maybe that one is the actual cerulea and then the semi. Some tags may have gotten flipped around. That's what I was getting at. set my camera down on the table didn't even bother to stop recording and this orchid right here in spike still had like two or three buds blast off of it that's not terrible considering that just you know a few weeks ago they were outdoors and i moving them from out to in when they're in spike i really prefer not to do i kind of talked about the conditions and the changing a little bit in my previous video about bud drop because a lot of a lot of people Tons of people have been asking me about why there are Thanksgiving cactus, Christmas cactus, holiday, whatever you want to call it, why theirs were dropping their buds. So I went ahead and finally made a video on it. And the same thing applies to orchids. So only a couple buds have popped off on that one, though. I'm really excited for it to bloom. It's never bloomed for me before. Not that one. Okay, and then over here, I wasn't going to show this area because I've been making some changes, but I'll just avoid that and we'll talk about it next week when I can. Essentially what happened over here is I got some plants in. I was going to do a plant haul and the, a lot of them just came in looking terrible. This isn't one of them. This just looks terrible because I left it in the full sun and it scorched. And uh, I'm awaiting hearing back from them about multiple things before I do the plant haul. And so they're over there. I did kind of set up a little bit of a, like a humidity tray kind of thing here and it's working out okay, but it has taken away from being able to, you know, screw it. Here's the look they said to give it a week to see how the plant looks well doesn't look very good to me but that's what they said to do so i'm just following their rules to talk about the rest of those plants when i have that plant haul the it's a company i've ordered from a lot and they've been very nice and very helpful but yeah i'll talk about that more later this oncidium back here I know the blinds need to be cleaned. Don't worry about it. Another reason that it smells so good out here is this Oncidium's Blooming. That's a Shari baby. If you're new to orchids, a lot of people say to go with Phalaenopsis orchids, which I somewhat agree with. But for the most part, these Oncidium Shari babies, or Shari, S-H-A-R-R-Y, they are such an easy to grow orchid. Getting them to flower, not always the case. Sometimes you get one that's more vigorous than others. Mine, almost all of mine, bloom every single year, but like they can bloom multiple times a year. I know the Phalaenopsis orchids are a popular starter plant just because they're affordable, right? They don't cost a ton and they're okay. It's just sometimes they're grown in a way that makes them a little bit more difficult to start things out. Sometimes they're packed in like moss and stuff like that, which isn't always ideal. It doesn't happen with the Oncidiums as often. At least not the Shari babies. Look at the Persian Shields. Y'all remember the Persian Shields? Several weeks ago, I was like, oh, I'm going to throw it away because I was cleaning out my annuals and I went fine. Potted one up, but cut everything off. And it's doing well. Looking good. I haven't had to do much with it. The soil, it's a little dry. I don't really have time to do any watering today. So when I go through and I see like a plant here or there that's a little bit dry, I'll just spot water. But it's not bone dry there's still some moisture in there so it should be okay look at oh aren't they pretty yeah i'm sure these looked a lot better when i was using my good camera in the video from the other day but this one hadn't bloomed yet it's the one that was in the left of the shot and it's really this is one of my favorites that i've ever had the color is just so pretty it's almost like a crimsony coral does that make any sense at all not quite i think it's the flowers are like the most holiday-ish out of any of the ones I have. I will say that when I got it, the flowers 
last year were a little bit more vibrant, but it, they've just started to open up. So sometimes there's still some changes to happen. So I'll just go ahead and hang that back up from the birdcage. There we go. Oh, and look at the poblano. Looking great, right? Lots of growth on the poblano. That was kind of a long shot when I brought this one and then the amazel basil, which I'm reaching for right now. That's why the camera's going crazy. <laughs> there, the amazel basil. Down here, I just kind of cut them back. I probably, this branch and this branch, I probably should have just cut this back to the stem completely, but I didn't. I'm not really certain why. What is that? Oh, snail. Gotta watch out for the snails. I think that there was still enough green on these branches that I decided to go ahead and leave them there. I thought anything that had some chlorophyll in it should stay just to be safe, but I can actually probably prune this off and prune this off at this point and try to get more bushy growth to come out of the main stem here but i'm still i'm gonna give it like a week or so to do some more flushing out because it's only been what two and a half three it's been about three weeks at this point since i cut everything off of it same thing with this poblano they just kind of hung out and did their thing and i still haven't gotten the other grow light set up on this shelf right here it only has one bulb on it right now so they're doing very well, considering that there's only one bulb there in contrast over here where there's four and then all these other LEDs and things going on. But yeah, the Poblano, is, that's Oz. <laughs> but the Poblano, that's the one I'm the most surprised about because I was like, eh, I don't know. I haven't tried with the peppers out here in this growth space before. But yeah, I mean, I'd say that looks pretty decent and I have a much better stem to work off of now because this actually got kind of long and leggy. I planted it late in the year and the poblanos, it's, I think it's like 70 to 80 days for them to get to maturity. So I planted it when it was still within that time frame. However, the um, sun changed because moved into late summer into fall only like a month after planting them and they didn't get as much light as they were getting. So they started to like lean and get really long and leggy. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring it in, just because I was like, well, no, I want some poblanos. I love poblanos. <laughs> and uh, I thought that it would be a good chance to go ahead and make that cut and get a nice sturdy stem so anything that grows off of this will have a lot more support to it. It'll just be a stronger plant in general. And whether or not that's going to actually flower and then fruit inside in here, I have no idea. It was just sort of a for fun thing. Same thing with the amazel basil. Just wanted to give it a shot. Looks okay. Smells fantastic. I just need to need to even out that prune. But like I said, I'm still going to give it a little bit more time. I want to see what growth it flushes out on this main stem on its own before I start cutting away at this foliage up here because that's got chlorophyll in it. It's good stuff that the plant needs to get going. So I'm going to let them chill for a while. But I'm happy with how they've come along. They're looking great. Ooh, look at that new leaf. Who does? Come back. Come back to the shot. That was supposed to be pretty when you ran away. Look at that. Very pretty variegation. This particular a la Kaja, I don't think I've talked about this. I've talked about my Odoros, the Okinawa Silvers. That's what these are right here. Whereas this one is one of the uh, a la Kaja macros, macro heises, the larger, slightly larger than the Odoros, less cold tolerant than the Odoros, but should get larger foliage on it. It was sold as like it had, it was variegata something cream, something like that. I don't know. Like sometimes people who sell these things just sort of make up names. So I'm not going to put too much into that, but it's just an alocasia of macroiza variegata, maybe a cream and whatever it was called. I don't know if it's a real that's a real variety, but it's a beautiful plant. Really enjoy the variegation on it. It's put out a whole bunch of growth. And look at that. Isn't that stunning? Sometimes when I move the tropicals inside, they just kind of hang out and chill for a little bit. Sorry, I know the hand's been in these clips a lot throughout this video, but I'm doing things, so it's hard to not have my hands in the shots when I'm reaching for things and doing things. Anyways, like I was saying, times when I move the tropicals and subtropicals and they just kind of like hang out and chill and don't do much, particularly the alocasias. But this one, it's put out a few new leaves, which I'm really happy about because these are, a, they really, they enjoy heat. They like heat a lot. And I figured that the new foliage, if it were to put out any new foliage that came out, would be really small. But that hasn't been the case. There is some smaller foliage down in here. You can see that, but it's coming up. Whoops, sorry. 
that's all coming up from down below on smaller little offsets. So it's done well. This leaf right here, I was a little bit concerned when that came out because I was like, oh no, don't you revert on me. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It, no, actually, I'd be pretty pissed off if that were to happen, only because with this particular alocasia, I don't know if pruning it would help regain any variegation. Whereas, like, over here at the Okinawa Silvers, when when they did revert, which only happened once and it was this summer, I've had them for years, I cut off any foliage that wasn't variegated, and the foliage that came out after uh, maintained some of its variegation, but not on all of them. You can see, some of them were just like, nah, I'm not having that variegated life anymore, and others responded to the prune. I usually go a, a leaf to two leaves down. And it works out okay, but it's only because I learned over the summer that just doing a simple prune with these, when they start to lose their variegation, that that doesn't necessarily bring back the variegation. Did that make any sense? Probably not. It was kind of confusing. This one, however, lost almost all of its variegation, and I gave it a heavy, heavy cutback, and what came out was variegated. So it was the main thing was getting the first leaf that was starting to lose it, like this guy right here, but... You can see inside the stems, I knew that those were okay, so I didn't have to mess with them. So here's a little rundown on my experience with these variegated alakajas that nobody asked for. They don't usually revert, though. I, like I said, I've had these Okinawa Silvers for years, and it was just this year that they started to lose some of their variegation, and which is weird. And by years, I mean like, I don't know, maybe five or six years I've had some of those. So I don't know what happened there. Not really sure, but it's coming back. The new growth is holding on to it, so it's okay. But yeah, with this one, I would be kind of annoyed because, like I said, I learned with the Odoros over here that sometimes just pruning off that old foliage doesn't always do it with these. So that would, I would be upset because it was kind of pricey. I got a good deal on it, but it was still sort of an expensive plant. So I wouldn't be very happy about that. But reversion happens sometimes. So, and it's a learning thing. Like, I don't know how stable the variegation is on these. I won't know until I've grown it for a while. I can read the stuff online, but sometimes it's not true. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta learn for yourself, right? And now, one of the last things I need to do today is handle this synogium. Look at it. Oh, poor thing, so sad. This is actually a division from a larger plant that occupied this pot. It's one of the ones I got in, in the hall that has yet to be released. And it's one that I've been trying to get a hold of for a long time. It's the Pixie. Now, over the summer, I found someone on eBay who was selling the pixie varieties. So I ordered from that person and they sent me a little Diefenbachia. And I said, hey, wrong plant. And they said, oh, sorry. They went ahead and did the order again and then I received another Diefenbachia. That happened two more times. I ended up with four Diefenbachias that I don't, I didn't even want at the time, but still don't want them. And no pixie. But after the fourth time of getting the wrong plant, I was like, I don't, I'm done with dealing with you. Because, you know, the emailing back and forth with the people on eBay, it gets annoying after a while. It's not the most like intuitive software and it's just, it's obnoxious. Anyways, so I ordered a Pixie from, you can see Logis here, and I divided it up. Part of it is inside in a terrarium. I pulled the, that terrarium used to have a maiden hair fern in it, which was too big for the terrarium. Pulled that out and that's why I wanted one of these, was to put in that particular terrarium. But I went ahead and kept one of these little offshoots separate so I could divide that up. And it is, it wasn't looking great to begin with. You guys saw the other plants, right? They weren't looking too hot. So I'm just putting this in here just for a day, just to rehydrate it. Because I was just going to pot it straight up, but I think it's going to need some help. It needs to get hydrated a little bit more before I do that. Why is this... I've done this a bajillion times, and all of a sudden, when I'm recording a video, I can't get the lid to go down. Oh, uh, it's just, I think it just needed to be popped out. There we go. There can still be some openness there. It can breathe a little bit, but I'm just going to let that soak for a while, help hold in some humidity, and uh, once that soil's fully, hi, point the camera at what you're talking about, goodness. Once that soil, once I can tell it's fully saturated, I'll actually probably remove a lot of that water and just let it kind of hang out in this humid pot, and then, uh, I'm going to repot it. I actually am probably going to put it back here into my waterfall. I had a potophyllum back in there last year and it did wonderfully. But like I said, I just, I don't know, just to be safe, I thought I would do this first. The desk is a fairly warm area. 
you know, it's the heaters are everywhere over here. So I thought that that would be the best shot for that. Give it a soak for a little bit. And then, um, well, it's, I need to go start making dinner. Really? Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, quick update. It's been a whopping 30 seconds. I didn't realize how much water I had in there. I went ahead and pulled that out. It just, I just need to have this in a moist environment. That's all. Just to buy me a day, basically, until I can pot it up. I guess I didn't really talk about this very much. The pixie variety of the uh, Syngonium podophyllum gets like six to eight inches tall. Some, I mean, I feel like I've seen them bigger than that before, but I don't know for certain. When I've grown them, I've only grown the mini pixie, which stays much, much, much smaller. I've had a really hard time finding the mini pixie, but I did just look at Josh's frogs. I don't know if you guys have ever ordered from them before from Josh, from uh, Josh's frogs. He has a whole bunch of terrarium plants and he has them available right now, which usually I can't find them available. Lots of websites will have them listed, but not for sale. So the mini pixie has much smaller leaves, only gets like three to four inches tall. It's a great, fantastic plant for terrarium growing. So as soon as I'm done recording, I'm actually going to order a few of those and then I'll get to cooking dinner here. But that's just a little background on the pixie. Stays a lot smaller, nice plant for terrariums and just nice. Because the regular syngonium podophyllums, usually the white butterfly or butterf whatever it's called, the most common one with the green with the white kind of variegation in the foliage those are sold oftentimes with terrarium plants in the terrarium sections but they aren't labeled so when i see that leaf i just assume that it's probably a regular syngonium podophyllum white butterfly that's going to get absolutely massive because they're not labeled that i did so many places sell terrarium plants just as assorted plants and that's not useful i like to know that what i'm putting in my terrarium is going to stay nice and small so that's what that's about. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll just put something in a terrarium and with the assumption that it'll get too big and I'll take it out when that happens. But some of the terrariums, I like for them to be for longevity and I don't want it to have to mess with them. The terrarium that I did, uh, I don't know, last February, something like that, the one that had the maiden hair fern in it. I think I may have shown a clip of it a minute ago. I don't know. That one, I've only opened it up and watered it, I think, twice ever. It's been very easy, low maintenance and low fuss. And that's nice. If you stick with smaller plants, you don't have to prune and do things quite as often because they stay small. They don't outgrow the space. It makes sense, right? Okay, I do need to wrap things up. So it's going to be weird when the vlog comes out, the one that was supposed to come out today, because I spent a lot of time in that vlog talking about how I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. I even did a little bit of cooking, you could say, in that video, but the time will have passed. So I may wait to release that until next Saturday. And then on Sunday, the day after, release the vlog from everything I'm filming between the... Y'all don't need to worry about that. I'll figure it out. The vlog's going to come out, though. I just don't... There's no time to edit that today before having my day with my family, the family holiday and everything. And I'll be with everybody pretty much all day. So I'm not going to have time to have it out tomorrow either. So I figure we'll just wait till next week. There'll be other videos coming out during the week because, you know, vlogmas and whatnot. So I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Did you uh, have fun doing some Black Friday shopping? Those of you in the U.S., do you have a good Thanksgiving and doing your shopping, get good deals? I didn't really see anything that stuck out to me. Honestly, the places I looked, a lot of the stuff that was on really good Black Friday deals kind of just looked like places have been holding on to things that they were going to clearance out anyways. So I just, I wasn't really that into it, but I browsed a little bit and there were some good deals on certain things, but nothing I needed, nothing stuck out that would make a good present for anybody. So didn't really do any shopping. Today though is Small Business Saturday here in the US. So great day to go out and support your local businesses. If you're in St. Louis, Greenscape Gardens out here, they're having an event today. They're, they're doing some things with like porch pots and there's a giveaway. I think the giveaway will be done by the time this video comes out though. Either way, you know, like go support your local businesses. Have a good day. There's also something I saw trending on Twitter that was like no shop Saturday, which is the antithesis of small business Saturday. I don't, I don't know what that is. The internet's weird. There's just too much going on sometimes. And thank you for being understanding about my day and not being able to get that vlog out. It just kind of happens sometimes. There's still a video. We still got to hang out for a little bit. Oh, but oh, real quick, back onto the humidifier thing. I meant to talk about this when I was talking about the humidity. So I have one in my shopping cart. It's been sitting on there for Amazon and Amazon on Amazon. It's, ugh, 
Words are hard. Talking's difficult. It's been sitting in my cart on Amazon for quite some time. And it seems like a great humidifier. I see a lot of people use them for their plants. I know Kaylee Ellen, she's one who recommended it. I see a lot of other people using it. I like that it has a large capacity. It does warm and cool mist. And uh, it refills from the top. That's a really big plus. The other humidifiers I have tried, you have to take them to the sink, flip them upside down. They're kind of weird, wobbly, and wonky, and just a pain. A pain to refill. But I was thinking... And this is a bit extra, and I probably won't do it, but I also might. We will see. We'll talk about it first. I could put a float valve in the tank of the humidifier and uh, run a water line to it. Now, I know that that seems extreme, but out here in my garage, over through the plastic, beyond this wall over here, there's a refrigerator. And uh, that fridge got hooked up to a water line. The fridge used to be in the kitchen and then replaced it. But the other refrigerator's on the other side of the wall. So we just drilled a hole in the wall and ran water out to it. So we have all the extra ice around here. So what I'm saying is there's a water line out here. And I could run that water line to the humidifier, put a float valve on it that would sit in the tank. And when the water level got low, that would trigger it to go ahead and refill the tank and keep it higher. I know, very extra. It sounds like a lot of work. It really wouldn't be. I'd just have to slide the fridge back, make a few cuts, and it's really thin. It's refrigerator tubing, the kind of stuff you use for like reverse osmosis systems and whatnot, and uh, the bits and pieces used to attach those, they just snap together. So running that water line wouldn't really be that big of a deal, but the question that I have is, is there enough space in the tank on that humidifier for a float valve? So I'll dig around, see if there's like miniature float valves or anything like that. It is something I also need to be really careful about though, because those float valves, do, do I need to explain what a float valve is? Does, do you guys know? It's like the thing in the back of your toilet, there's a little, I'm pretending my fingers are float valve. So the tip of my finger would have a little piece of plastic full of air on it and it lowers down when the water gets lower. And then that triggers something that's like right where my upper knuckle is here. It triggers that to go, oh wait, go ahead and release water. It basically just makes it so that this moves past a valve. And then that valve opens and water comes out and it fills back up. And as it fills back up right here where my thumb is, that little valve would be closing off. So water can't come back in. Make sense? Hopefully. Yes. No. Maybe. Sometimes they're faulty and uh, this is a body of water. It's a tank of water sitting on top of something electric. Does it kind of seem like a bad idea? What are your thoughts? I think it might be dangerous. I might do it anyway. So we'll see. Okay, back to what I was saying, which was that I gotta go. <laughs> Time to cook dinner. I hope everybody's doing well, which I know I already said, but I say it again because I mean it. Also, not ideal. This isn't something I would necessarily recommend doing. I just, I needed to buy myself a day. That's all. I just needed a little bit of time. As the week goes by, I'll be posting stuff up on Instagram. All my social media is linked down below. I'm mostly on Instagram, though. That's probably the best place to follow me. And uh, if you haven't and you'd like to, support the channel by giving it a thumbs up. It makes a really big difference and I appreciate it. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Notification bell. Kind of helps. Not necessarily. There's a lot of YouTube stuff we need to be talking about. I don't feel like going into it today, though, because today's my day with the family. We're celebrating the holiday today. And I want to get worked up. But there's some, there's some stuff going on with, you know, all this COPA act and whatnot and just ugh. yeah that's not not for this video i'd like to end things on an upbeat note okay okay that's enough and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye